everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We bring you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Yep, I know it, I know it. Today is Tuesday, and I don't normally drop a video on Tuesdays, but this was a little special. This is, of course you know, the last two Wednesdays that I'm gonna be doing Christmas Wednesdays of the year 2020. And these ones are really special. They're special to me, and I'm hoping that you'll find a little inspiration for your Christmas season through them. Now, in light of that, I wanted to get a little help to talk about them from the most famous man of the Christmas season, Santa Claus. So grab yourself a cup of hot cocoa, and I hope you enjoy this interview. I hope it brings you a little magic and feeling of a little Christmas spirit. I will say, please do not share this video with any of the children. It will ruin the magic. This is for you, for you, the quilter or the sewist. So let's get this started and I'll be back at you after the interview. Enjoy. So before we get started here, I first want to say thank you, Santa, for taking time out of your really busy schedule. I know this is the busiest time of your year to sit down and do a little chit chat with us. And I want to reiterate that this video is not meant for kids. Don't let your kids watch this. Um, it's real important that we keep that little bit of magic in, in, in along with this. But again, thank you, Santa. Appreciate it. So for those of you who aren't sure, my name is Angel and I'm with Halo Inspirations and I have the ultimate pleasure of sitting here with the most famous man of the Christmas season, Santa Claus. So welcome, Santa. Thank you now, very much. Yeah, to get started, I just wanted to tell you, Santa, my favorite childhood story. Um, with Santa. So when I was about three and a half, um, I used to, I remember I used to sit by my bedroom window at night on Christmas Eve and generally we had snow. I lived in Pennsylvania so we would have snow and I'm watching the snow and I'm watching the skies and I'm waiting for Santa to come. Well this one particular year I'm sitting there not supposed to be by the window. I'm supposed to be in bed but I'm, I'm all of a sudden hearing sleigh bells man had i got excited i said am i really hearing this kind of thing and i'm got you know looking out the window i don't hear anything and then i hear this sleigh being drunk up across the roof i can hear it being, <laughs> yes so then i'm like oh my gosh he's really here he's really here and i just couldn't believe it so i sat real quiet and the next thing you know, there was a knock at the door. And I can hear my mom answer the door and she says, well, hello, Santa Claus, how are you? And he talks, you know, like you do. He talked with his voice and his ho, ho, ho's and just everything you believe about Santa. And he came in and he dropped off the gifts and he wished my mom a Merry Christmas. And then I heard the sleigh being drug across the roof again and the sleigh bells again ringing. And I'm looking and I just couldn't believe that in fact he had came to my house and I caught it, but I never got to see it. Well, later I learned that my dad and, my, and his brother, my uncle, had done this whole thing. They got a sleigh out, they got the bells out. They, you know, acted as Santa Claus and talking to my mom. But what that did is it gave me such a magical time to remember and that I want to recreate for other children as they got older. So my own kids, my, you know, um, anybody that I might talk to, it just really made it magical. So that's where this whole thing really starts for me when I get into Christmas is going back to that very vivid memory of you, Santa. And 
you know, it's such a magical time. You have lights, you have decorations, you have the music, you, you know, you tend to get together with family and friends that you haven't talked to maybe all year. Uh, they might live far away. Um, it brings you closer as a family sometimes. And there's just some real magic, but it doesn't just have to be for the kids. And I'm, I, you know, it's, it can be totally magical for adults too. And I know that you are magical. I know that all season you do these miracles per se. And it's just amazing that the, the things that you are able to do, especially on Christmas Eve. I mean, going across the world and delivering presents to every child is a miracle in itself, right? It's quite a feat, if I do say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is. But I do believe that your magic is something even more, more than just delivering those presents. It's the ability for you to put a little Christmas spirit into all of us. And I'd like to ask, what is your definition of the Christmas spirit, Santa? The feeling of peace love, joy, and just <clears throat> the sheer happiness of being around your fellow man, your family. It's basically just love. love. And you are, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And there is a love. There truly the, is. The, the excitement on people's faces when they encounter me is unfathomably just wonderful. It makes me feel so good inside, warm, fussy, to know that I'm bringing joy and happiness to someone who might otherwise not have much happiness in their life in this trying times we're having here. Absolutely. And you are very, very good at it. And it's so interesting because you do bring joy and happiness, not just to children, but oh, even to adults. Children, <laughs> but believe me, I have... 7,500 year old uh, people who revert back to their childhood when I'm in the room. Yes. <laughs> I that put out some of my magic. <sighs> oh. Wow. Uh. <laughs> it brings happiness to people. <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you, Santa. So let me ask, Anna. a lot of people aren't um, familiar with how you got started um, and why. Why do you do what you do? Well, I was actually born March 15th, 270 AD. Wow. That makes me 1,750 years old. And I was a monk in uh, Myra, this little Greece town. Myra, and it's basically Turkey now, in an area where Turkey is, but back in the days it was called Myra. And uh, I just saw the need for children to have, to, to be able to have something in their lives that was not so depressing. Those were dark ages. Yeah. So there was fright in the night, and for me to bring in the night joy and happiness by leaving a little small toy that I've carved out of wood or it didn't have to be anything special you know it could have been fruit in those days if you had an orange it was a wonderful thing to give someone so it all began like that and it just snowballed over the years and, it, and I was considered a saint which you know that's somebody else's doing but uh, again humility love and sharing what you can with other people to bring joy and happiness into their life, even if it's just for a moment. That's a wonderful story. Thank you. I didn't even know where you came from. So I, I love the history and you've done, that's a lot of spread of beauty and joy and happiness in, in the world for a lot of years. So thank you, Santa. So you know that, you know, even though you've been around for a long time and we all know that you have, um, sometimes when we get older, we stop believing. And, you know, it, it get, it, we kind of 
may lose a little bit of the magic. You know, adults tend to worry about finances or, you know, getting to work and bad trap. I mean, bad weather. I mean, I mean, all the things that can bring magic can kind of get lost. So, and then also with this year, um, it's been really difficult for many of us with the effects of COVID. So my couple of questions for you at this point is, how any suggestions that you could give adults on how maybe to believe in you again um, and, and get that magic? And then do you have any suggestions for us to keep that spirit of Christmas alive and well during this COVID affected holiday? Well, always believe in the real reason for the season. Never forget, it's not about St. Nicholas. It's not about Santa Claus. It's about the Lord's Savior. Okay, so we keep that in our hearts and let the love from that shine through. And just remember, this will come to an end. It won't last forever. That's basically. That's true, and that's that's beautiful and you're absolutely 100 percent correct in, in my opinion <laughs> because it is about the love and that is very magical in itself and um i it's will love definitely everything yes love is everything love and hope love and hope so thank you santa i will definitely do my part i promise i'll be a, a nice girl <laughs> and i will do my part to spread love <laughs> um now i'm going to switch gears a little bit because I'm gonna kind of bring you into why I asked you here, besides all this amazing things. Um, but do you or Mrs. Claus do any quilting? No, I don't do any quilting myself. Mrs. Claus has done a little bit with needlework, but uh, not really much quilting. She has so many other things to do. I know. <laughs> Care of me is a big job. <laughs> she also helps with the reindeer. You know, it's, it's, it's not an easy feat what we do. So it takes both of us. Without her, there would be no me. That is very true. I, I've seen different things that she keeps you in line. <laughs> so, oh, well, here at Halo, um, we really do believe that quilters spread beauty and joy. They don't just do it during Christmas. They do it all year round. And for this year, they really have stepped up to the plate um, beyond what they normally do. And normally, it's, it's an amazing thing. Uh, they touch people with their stories. They touch people with their work and all their what we call labor of love. And they just can move mountains in spreading that beauty and joy. But this year, they even went out and they, were, they met a calling when they were asking for masks. They did it for their friends and family. They've done it for hospitals, police organizations, different health professions that really needed those masks. And they, tens and tens of thousands, quilters and sewers alike, actually stepped up to the plate and donated their, their money and their time. Yes. And that, again, has spread beauty and joy. And here at Halo, we just want to give back to an industry that is so generous. Many of the seamstresses that are working nowadays on stuff for us, they're doing the same thing. They're using all their scrap materials and making masks and sending them to first responders. It's okay. a wonderful thing. That's beautiful. I had no idea. Well, tell your elves thank you. Your we have many seamstresses. Elves. Say again? We have many seamstresses. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm glad that you shared that. So during September, and this is a little information for you, um, but during September through uh, December uh, here at Halo, we like to do one or two Christmas oriented, either quilting or crafting type things. And we've done various types of wreaths. We've done various types of ornaments. And we just try to give a little inspiration for the Christmas season. And I like to get started early because we all know how time runs out, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm always in a trunch for time. <laughs> I know. Who am I talking to? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> you got deadlines. <laughs> but, tomor <laughs> but tomorrow, uh, which is Wednesday, um, and the following Wednesday, we have our last two what I call Christmas Wednesday projects. 
And basically what they are, and they're so super special to me, and it's one of the reasons I act, asked you here, because I wanted to show it to you, because you were part of the inspiration. So what we're doing is something we're calling Cookie Santa Rugs. Oh, uh, my favorite cookies. I know. <laughs> cookies and hot cocoa. <laughs> oh, my heart. <laughs> I'm sharing a glass with you now. <laughs> so... The whole thing I had, I'm going to be doing the two weeks and these are free YouTube videos that we put out. So anybody who's interested in making them, it's completely free, but we have two of them. We have this one, which I'm calling the Christmas star. And the inspiration for both of these actually started in the idea that you love cookies right? That's and you true. put out milk and cookies or cocoa and cookies and carrots for the reindeer. And we usually, now when I was little, I was given a plate. This is from 1973. And I love to, and it's old and broke and I've glued it. I recognize everything. that plate. Huh? I recognize that plate. You recognize it. I know. Right? So I would put out my cookies and milk and carrots for the reindeer and um you know that's where this came from it, it was a plate and even with children you might find them plastic that says cookies for santa um, with some fun print uh, to make things a little fun for you well that's where this inspiration came from and this first one is the christmas star and it's a little more difficult but i'm walking through step by step I pick these colors because they're so regal and I think of you as being regal. And in the next one that I'm teaching, I actually use snowflakes with regal material. But the Christmas star is so amazing. And for us Christians, we believe that the Christmas star shone in the sky on the night that Jesus Christ was born and it guided the three kings to him where he was located so they can bear him gifts. Did you know that it will be visible again soon? Oh, when? Uh, I have to get my dates right on it. I have to consult with the elves again, but oh. it's leading up to where the Christmas star will be visible again. First time in 800 years, <gasps> I believe. I am so glad you said something because I will definitely look that up and I will uh, let our community know when that next date will the be. Christmas star is, is very special in our world. And that's what I was going to ask you. You know, I've, I've actually read and watched, okay, I watch movies, right? And they have Santa. And I've heard that it might fuel your sleigh or it might guide you to something. What's the truth behind the Christmas star for Santa Claus? Well, the Christmas star, it fuels the Roya Borealis so that the Roya Borealis can shine bright with all their dancing colors. And the dust from the Royal Borealis, my elves gather it, and we use it for different things. Some dust, some of the different colors, like the red, for instance, we sprinkle, and the reindeer can fly and pull the sleigh. Another color, and it's up the chimneys I go. So, yes, the Christmas star serves a very important function for the North Pole. It fuels everything in the North Pole. Everything. That is amazing. Without that, and of course you know why we have the Christmas star, the star of Bethlehem. It's awesome. The star should appear on December to 21st. Oh, okay. You see it visibly on December the 21st. Very nice. As long as the skies are clear. As long as the skies are clear. And that would be a little Christmas magic. That would be a little, a lot of Christmas magic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. Yes, the, the star of Bethlehem fuels everything in the North Pole. That is amazing. Now I'm, now I'm actually going to do a little reading about all that um, for myself because now I'm intrigued by that whole story. That, I appreciate you hearing. It's Jupiter and Saturn will be lining up, and that's what's going to make it visible. Okay. Very awesome. I'm, thank you for sharing, Santa. Now we can all look to the skies um, to see the, the beautiful star, Bethlehem. 
So I appreciate that one. Um, the other thing that we, I did is a different one. It's a little easier and it's more childlike, meaning that the colors we used were much funner. Mm -hmm. And they've got Santa, it's got reindeer, it's got the snowman. I don't know if you're friends with Frosty, but he's oh, on course. here too. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot easier. Um, but I call this one the Christmas tree for Santa and his reindeer. But I got to thinking, not everybody has a Christmas tree around the world or stockings even. So I was kind of wondering if you could share some other places that you may or, um, may, you know, where you've made drop some of your presents or gifts. Oh, gosh. You name it. I've dropped them inside in a wheelbarrow that was outside the door. Oh. Uh, dropped them in cars, trunks of cars, uh, inside closets inside the house uh oh my gosh in the barn oh you name it we've dropped presents off everywhere Ever. over the years some we just used to leave by the doors oh they would find them in the morning when they woke up and went outside that is awesome i've always wondered that because not everybody does christmas trees you know and you know everybody doesn't have a chimney either that's true ain't that the truth i didn't when i was three and you came to the door. <laughs> yeah, Tim and I also have these. That is a magic key. That key fits any door on the planet. It will unlock any lock on the planet on Christmas Eve. So we got that covered. The magic key. That magic. is amazing. I bet you some of that dust was help, help create that, did it not? Yes, it did. I don't know if you could see it, but it actually has residuals left on the key. Can you oh, see it? Oh, yeah. You can see it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I bet you do. It makes your job a little easier. It does. It makes it so much easier. So what do you think of the Christmas Santa rug, Santa? Do I, I, like I do mom. okay? <laughs> yes. I think they're real attractive. Okay, appreciate that. Now, I want again, thank you for coming by um, and just giving us a little inspiration, a little of the Christmas magic and putting a little joy and happiness and giving us the Christmas spirit during this time. But we all know that you, Santa Claus, are also known as Mr. Billy Brown. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so Santa Billy. Why don't you introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about Billy Brown, maybe the services you provide, organizations you belong to, you know, different things of, of that nature. Okay. Well, I belong to the Fraternal Order of Real Bearded Santas, and that's uh, guys who have the real beards. There's three set kinds of beards. There's a real beard, a theatrical beard, and a human hair beard. Wow. I'll give these beards, you know, there's a span of money, <laughs> just big and just small. Right. I won't go how much. But uh, I, I, I support all kinds of different charities. We do even doggy fundraisers for no kill shelters. We even do those. Go to lots of nonprofit hospitals and stuff like that and support whoever needs, like Toys for Tots, if someone needs a Santa to come and, and, and help raise money for an event, whatever it is, usually uh, we can manage it. Uh, I started this, you want my story? I would love, well, I know we all would love to hear your story. Well, about nine, 10 years ago, I went to my brother's wedding in Philadelphia. Pennsylvania and I was manning the barbecue grill I quit I had retired from work the year before now let me give you a little backstory they made me shave every day to go to work for 30 years I had to shave be clean shaven so when I retired I stopped shaving so then a year later I go to my brother's wedding and this little child maybe four years old 
he kept walking by me and looking at me sideways. He didn't come up, but he'd look at me and walk on by. He did that about six, eight times. Then he got the courage to come up to me. And he says, are you Santa Claus? Now, I've always been a ham. So I pulled my glasses down and I went right into it. How did you know? <laughs> so we had a 20 minute conversation and I had him convinced that I was Santa Claus and my, I answered questions about the sleigh and everything. I, I'm pretty good off the cuffs. <laughs> and later on that day, my brother came up to me. I didn't think anything of it after that, you know. And later on that day, my brother came up to me and asked me how I talked to the child. I said, yeah, we talked. And he said, well, he pulled on my coat and said, come here, I got a secret. Santa's going to be at your wedding. So when we got home, that stuck with me because I enjoyed talking with him. Mm -hmm. So I looked in the mirror and I looked at myself and I said, wow you do look like Santa Claus. <laughs> so I started shopping for a suit. I found a used suit on Craigslist. The lady wanted $225 for it. So I had a $600 suit. And uh, I only had 125 bucks that day. And she said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the suit. You give me the $125. And after you make some money with it, you come back and pay me the rest. I never didn't know this lady from Adam and uh, well that's what transpired my first gig paid for the suit and it just and it just went on from there the first child that I saw in my suit she was in the hallway I was just about to get to my chair I turned around she was in a purple onesie she could have been more than about four maybe four she just you could hear the air just suck out of her when she saw me, <laughs> Santa, and she runs up and she bears her face in my coat. And I was hooked. I was hooked after that. And it just snowballed. I worked on everything. I, I, I couldn't find equipment that was satisfactory because everything's so cheaply made. So I thought I'd produce some. Found a niche market in the Santa world as well. I'm in a group with over 5,000 Santas. And it just snowballed from there. And then one product led to another product. And then one uh, event led to another. Now I've done TV commercial. Uh, I've done many in-home visits. I do Langley Air Force tree lighting every year. Been doing that for five years. A lot of city stuff for the cities. I just did a parade in Red Oak, North Carolina for the city down there. It's an awesome thing to do. Yeah. Um, and our, our suits are custom made for us now. I couldn't find anything on the shelf that I really liked. So I had seamstresses make our suits for us. So I've had seven, eight different pieces made specifically for me. Even my boots I had made specifically for me. Wow. Yeah. You you're, you're a lot of money. A yeah. lot of money in this. Mm-hmm. So if you're planning on going to the world being Santa Claus, open your wallet up if you want to get the quality stuff, look the part, and be uh, competitive in the world today. That helps bring that magic. Stuff. I don't do malls. I don't do Cabela's. I don't do anything that has a line that's a long line, and they want you to read from a script under a minute. No. I have to spend quality time with each individual child. And that's what makes my visits unique. It's giving them all the time that they need. Wow. So how is it um, that, you know, especially for people that live in the Hampton Roads area, but even further, um, it, it may be um, something that could be possible. How could people find you? Facebook, website, you know, how, how is it that email? I mean, and I will put those links down below in the description box, but how can no. they find you? I am Hampton Road Santa Claus on Facebook. You can just Google me, Hampton Road Santa Claus. I'll pop up and it'll be a link to my website as well, which has email addresses. I'm easy to find. You are easy. And I got to tell you, I super, we were talking about this before the interview. I super love your website. And some of the things on there are, oh my gosh, amazing and very unique. And, um, I look forward to exploring 
even more through different Christmas holidays. So I, I just, um, I just want to share that, that you've got a phenomenal, and the pictures on your Facebook, the art and the pictures that y'all create, they're amazing. Well, I do something every morning. I say good morning to the world every day. And I say I down for my, for my wake up every day. And I try to do some sort of uh, editing on a photo, something different every morning. And my it, followers it, seem to like that. It actually brings more magic um, to the season to see what you have on your Facebook. It is on, on, it's truly, it's, it's art and it brings beauty and joy. So thank you so much. What yeah. A thank you for your hard work because it's, it's absolutely wonderful to, it's kind of magical. It's like, Hey, look, I know Santa. <laughs> I'm following Santa. <laughs> Cause I follow you. <laughs> So I want to ask you lastly, um, Billy Brown or Santa, do you have any last words that you'd like to share with anybody who's watching? Well, as we all know, we're going through this COVID-19 thing and it will pass, hopefully without affecting too many more people personally and killing so many people. The vaccine is coming, just stay safe. Try to keep your social distancing, obey the rules, and let's hope for the best. And we will move out of this eventually. It will go away and we'll be back to our, I don't know if it'll ever go back to the way it was, but it'll be better than it is now. Well said, Santa. Well said. So thank you. Thank you for stopping. Thank you for sharing this moment with all of us. Thank you for your inspiration. And I truly hope that God continues to bless you. Miss Amen. Claus, your hardworking, awesome elves, your famous reindeer. I wish you safe travels this year. I truly do. And above all, I wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, young lady. <laughs> oh, you're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? I hope that you enjoyed that as much as I did. He is a wonderful man, a wonderful Santa Claus. And I actually learned a lot. I got some inspiration out of that where my mind is kind of churning for some future uh, Christmas Wednesdays because there's a lot in there that you can work with. But... Tomorrow, we're going to be doing our first Santa cookie rug. And I wanted to tell you the inspiration. I did talk about how we leave out the plates. And we, we, we as quilters make mug rugs. But they're smaller, right? And we have a place for a mug. And we have a place for our cookies. That's great. But this is for Santa. So these are bigger. Um, it's more of a, a larger item. So you can put the cookies. You can put the milk or the co cocoa, which like we all know is his favorite. Maybe some carrots for the reindeer or some magic reindeer dust, which we'll be talking about again tomorrow. But we're going to start with the Christmas star. And this one is uh, a little more difficult. I call it intermediate because of all the points. But there are no Y seams. There are no partial seams. And I try to make this as easy as possible. I don't think it's hard and it goes together very quickly and it doesn't use a lot of fabric. So that will start tomorrow. And you know, as far as me saying it's an adult version, the, the colors are very regal, like I see Santa. Um, and yeah, you can still do one for a child. They may very well love the regalness because we look at Santa that way. But I got to thinking, there's no reason why you can't write a note to Santa and make your Christmas wish, laying out your cookies of, with milk and cocoa. And when you're doing your thing, you can eat the cookies and milk and cocoa, right? <laughs> but you can partake in that magic as an adult and you can make your Christmas wish. And this would be a wonderful place to put it with your cookies and et cetera. So we're going to start with this one tomorrow, and then we're actually doing, this one's a little easier, 
Well, it's actually a lot easier and the colors are more vibrant and I'll, you know, I'll talk more about that on Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday, not tomorrow, but next Wednesday. And uh, we'll get that one, but that will be the last of the Christmas Wednesdays for 2020. So I really truly do hope that you found just a moment of magic, felt a little of the Christmas spirit, and I hope you enjoyed this. But until next time, may y'all continue to be inspired, productive, and joyful, and never stop making your dreams and quilting come true. May your homes be filled with love and hope for this season. And until tomorrow, Merry Christmas. See you then.